British-based monitoring group reports relative calm in Syria's Idlib region after a ceasefire agreed by Russia and Turkey came into force there at midnight. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said Russia and Syria have not carried out any air raids in Idlib. Russian President Vladimir Putin and his uh, Turkish counterpart Recep, Ayyab, Ter Recep Tayyip Erdogan that is, announced the truce in Moscow. Mr. Putin said the agreement will serve as a good basis for ending fighting in Idlib. However, Erdogan threatened that despite the deal, Ankara will retaliate against any Syrian army attack. In a statement read out by Russia's foreign minister, the two leaders also agreed to respect Syria's territorial integrity. We confirm their commitment to respecting the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Syria. We are determined to fight terrorism and eradicate all terrorist groups recognized as such by the UN Security Council. And we agree that there should be no threat to civil infrastructure or civilians. According to the deal, Turkey and Russia will establish a secure corridor along uh, a key east-west highway in Idlib and hold joint patrols on it as uh, of March the 15th. The region has seen renewed tensions, as you know, over the past weeks, with Turkey reinforcing its positions there. Turkey wants to stop Syria's anti-terror operations in Idlib that aim to liberate it from Ankara-backed militants. Let's discuss this a little bit further with uh, Mr. Marcus Papadopoulos. He is a publisher and editor with Politics First, who joins us via Skype out of the British capital of London. Marcus, as always, it's good to have you with us. Uh, besides your understanding, I want to share you with uh, I want to share with you my understanding of this, or at least how I predicted this would come out seriously before uh, Mr. Erdogan went to Moscow. Few people predicted that anything will come out of it, but right now it seems that the deal basically looks that every fact that was already in place through the previous agreements between Russia and Turkey as far as Syria goes? In essence, the uh, agreement between uh, Moscow and Ankara demonstrates the enormous leverage that Russia has over Turkey. It demonstrates the deteriorating, deteriorating situation for Turkey in Idlib. And it demonstrates that the initiative is firmly with the Syrian army. Now, I'll, I will elaborate. Uh, firstly, the agreement provides um, a very much needed respite for the Turkish army in Idlib after having lost scores of soldiers over the last couple of weeks, principally at the hands of the Russian military. Number two, the agreement provides an opportunity to Erdogan to think long and hard about Turkey's illegal presence in Idlib. Thirdly, it demonstrates that Turkey is dependent on Russia to avoid further losses in life for Turkish soldiers. And fourthly, the agreement demonstrates that Ankara is now very, very aware. There is no doubt in the mind of Erdogan or any other Turkish policy maker that Moscow is absolutely intent on seeing the Syrian army liberate every inch of Syrian territory. So that is the agreement which is in place, and that is the agreement that will be in place, in my opinion, for a short-term period because it's up to Erdogan. If Erdogan wants to maintain the presence of the Turkish army in Idlib, then the Turkish army is going to incur serious losses. It will continue to see Turkish soldiers return to Turkey in body bags. The Turkish mm. army has no hope of victory. The Turkish army has no hope of stemming the Syrian military backed by the Russian military. Or, alternatively, Turkey or Erdogan can withdraw Turkish forces gradually 
from Idlib, and because uh, Putin is given an opportunity to Erdogan to do so, this can be a dignified retreat for Erdogan. However, as I said moments ago, if Erdogan uh, continues to send additional forces into Idlib, then the agreement will be short term, but nothing can prevent the inevitable. We have seen in the last few weeks the Syrian army rapidly liberate mile upon mile of Syrian territory, and the agreement allows the Syrian army to keep control of the territory. So the ball is firmly in the court of Erdogan now. Yeah, Marcus, uh, give me your understanding on this. Uh, a lot of people thought before this happened that uh, Erdogan, through, you know, giving way to the uh, new asylum seekers and, you know, um, actually giving the free way to move to Europe. And uh, a lot of the actions that he took within the past few weeks was in order to drag the NATO into the Idlib region and, you know, was seeking support. You know, I was thinking that if it was not the last resort, he wouldn't have gone to Mr. Putin. Well, you can draw a parallel to the war in Georgia in 2008, when Mikhail Saakashvili uh, sent the Georgian army into South Ossetia. Did he do so believing that America would militarily back up Georgia against Which it uh, didn't. in an inevitable war with Russia? Well, Saakashvili made a grave miscalculation mm -hmm. because there was no way that America would embroil itself in a potential war with Russia. And we have to say the same about Erdogan. By uh, sending the Turkish army into Idlib and by uh, taking on the Russian military for a short term, uh, for, for a short time only, did Erdogan believe that the Americans would militarily come to the rescue? Perhaps he did. And in that case, once again, like with Saakashvili in Georgia, mm -hmm. it was a gross miscalculation. <clears throat> because no way would the Americans come to the aid of a Turkish army outside of the borders of Turkey. The, the Americans do not exactly. want to risk a World War III with Russia. I However, mean, back then, Mikh Mikhail Saakashvili was trying to, you know, put up a show. I remember the night that he uh, invited the world leaders and he spoke to them in two languages. But, well, you know, all he did back then, I totally agree with you, it was, was to try to persuade the international community that he is trying to, uh, to, to defend uh, his country's sovereignty. In case of Turkey, this is uh, a little bit different as far as Turkey was trying to basically drag other forces into another country's soil being Syria. That's a, a very good point you raised there, Marcus. But uh, I want to ask you my final question. Uh, right now, uh, somebody looking at it, would you say that Turkey is uh, leaving Moscow with gains? Or because it, at, on the surface at least, Marcus, it doesn't really look like that. Just uh, let's put out the fact, you know, we, uh, we have the M4 and M5 highways back to the Syrian army secure. We have Turkish outposts, I hear eight of them within the Syrian territory, which basically means they're at the mercy of the of the Syrian armed forces anytime they want. And, uh, you know, some of the things that I'm sure you know better than I. So what is it that he is leaving with right now uh, that basically the Turkish people or Turkish governments look at it and say, aha, this was good. We lost some forces here, but we gained some. Well, do you do you do you see that as such? One has to look below the surface regarding this agreement. And this agreement demonstrates, as I said moments ago, that Russia has enormous influence over Turkey in Idlib. Turkey is at the mercy, mm -hmm. not, just, uh, not just at the hands of the Syrian military, but also at the hands of the Russian military in particular. Turkey overstretched itself. This agreement benefits Damascus and, of course, it demonstrates Moscow's resolve. Moscow has said time and time again to Turkey and to other countries in the region that it will not stop until every inch of Syrian territory is liberated. The ball is in the court of Turkey now. If Turkey wants to continue its, its legal presence in Idlib, if it wants to continue backing Al-Qaeda in Idlib, 
then it will see its soldiers being slaughtered on a regular basis. And I do not believe that even Erdogan wants that. Turkey right. cannot take on a military superpower in the form of Russia. It is just, in my opinion, a matter of time until exactly. the Syrian army recaptures all of Syrian territory. Well, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us. Marcus Papadopoulos, publisher and editor with Politics First out of London. I appreciate your time, sir.